means are 777. Now, when you add that in with uh, some series and other numbers, you start to see 333 all emerging. Also, at the end, the train call sign that saves the day is uh, equals a 9. So you see that, uh, again, is there's certain subtleties that are used through certain uh, call signs uh, that give public notice. The issue is this. You either rebut it or you fall asleep to it. And again, is because it's a movie, you recognize, oh, it's just a movie. It, it, it's not real. Anyway, I uh, just thought I'd share that. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Uh, next up, uh, we have uh, Shambo. Shambo, uh, you're live. Hi, Frank. Hi. Uh, that was interesting couple last questions that just brought to my mind and I wanted your opinion. Uh, I'll just relate the way I see it and see what you think. It appears to me there's two world jurisdictions operating. Like, for an example, Washington, D.C. being a corporate entity, wouldn't the Vatican be a corporate entity also? Is it possible the world concept is the corporate entity and the creator's jurisdiction that exists above but not being used by us, the people, and would not the other fail if we used the creator system. I had a prosecutor tell me, in, or a public defender in court, that everything is voluntary. And we've basically absolutely volunteered out of the, I hate to call it a system, but we volunteer volunteered out of our true existence. Well, yeah, it's a very important the point. The, the, let me answer the second part first about voluntary, and then I'll do the first part second, if you don't mind. That's the, fine. The, 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 key, the key thing to... And we spoke about this last week, and we ran out of time tonight. The process of court, from the beginning of a summons right through to the sentence and imprisonment in many cases is the sacrament of penance. It is a religious ceremony underpinning uh, trust law that then underpins commercial law, uh, which is in line with case law and statute law. So it, it, is, it is absolutely um, a, a wedding cake of law that begins at the root with the idea that one voluntarily confesses and then is given absolution and penitence or penance in the form of the punishment. And then, of course, it is given different names and different interpretations at trust law and different interpretations at commercial and statute. Now, the reason we know that it is the sacrament of penance is the sacrament of penance begins with uh, firstly, uh, a voluntary prayer and plea, a call, which is called a form to action. And the form to action then causes a cause of action. The cause of action then requires uh, one to be a uh, penitent and to perform the act of contrition, which is an auricular confession. Once there is an auricular confession, uh, then there is the act of absolution, which is in the form of uh, a sentence and then the performance of that sentence. Now, does this sound like court to you? Can yes, you it, does. Lost? it does. And yeah. that's, that's why the question after the two previous callers it come to my mind. I've been through court quite a bit and... Uh, but, but do, you, do you see it now as a sacrament of penance in, in operation and its root? Oh, absolutely. I don't dispute anything you're saying. I'm just trying to put it in a little different perspective for people. That uh, It appears it's almost the same thing as operating in two different worlds. Well, what they're happy, they're very happy with the idea that multiple, multiple law can operate at the same time if the root is on it. <clears throat> now, where their thing trips up, Remember, they want to make money off you, yeah, which is the trust and commercial aspect of a court case, yeah? Absolutely. Now, the money, the money requires the indulgence to be perfected. 
that the indulgence is the instrument that permits money to be made off you. That's what they're doing. So for an indulgence to be perfected, the form of action must be valid. The form must then lead to the cause and the entire sacrament of penance must be concluded so that it appears, well, not only appears, that you ultimately say, I consent, I confess, I consent. Yeah, and That's either by your willful consent or by being deemed an incompetent, a minor, an idiot, in which case they can complete it for you by proving that you are unable to, to do it, but this is probably your intent. So if, if the process is disrupted and the indulgence is not perfected, they can't write bonds. It's unlawful and immoral. Yeah? Well, exactly. And I, through the numerous times I've been there, they really, and I've learned over the years, uh, they really need your signature. They need your signature. So thank you. Now, on the first part, um, which was... Uh, um, I've now, because I've gone off on a tangent, forgotten the first part of your question. What was the first part as an observation? Was Well, I was just, in the way I'm looking at this, there's like, and I might not be correct, but there's two world jurisdictions, so to speak. Oh, yeah, okay. Let me, let me answer that, that part. Um, with the limited time just in answering this question, there are many ways. Remember I said they're perfectly comfortable to view multiple levels of law. Right. They're also perfectly comfortable to view the world, the whole world, in different ways. And the one that they've been most comfortable with in the last 70 years is that we live inside the vault of a bank. Let me say that. We live inside the vault of one giant bank. That is... If you can get your head around that concept, it will reveal a hell of a lot as to how they believe they can get away with so much. Yeah? Yes, uh, I don't disagree with that at all. That, it, yeah. my, one of my points was uh, Washington, D.C., for example, in the United States being a corporate entity, wouldn't the Vatican be also a corporate entity? Yeah, what we'll do in, the, in coming chats, because I, I, I think these are valid points and, and I'll make a note of this. Next chat, I'll talk about corporate structures and, and the power of the New World Order so we can get into the, the Court of the Rota, the Chancery and, um, and the Treasury so you can see the apparatus of the Jesuits and how you can differentiate the Jesuits from the Vatican, the Vatican from the Venetian and the Parasites. And, and, and how the structures work. But in the time left, I'm probably not going to have time to go through it with you now. I will do it at the next call, all right? Okay, well, thank you very much. Good on you. Thank you. Great. Thanks for that. And uh, for other callers, if you could get into star eight to get in queue, uh, you're on with uh, the open calls Wednesday nights with University of Eucadium and with your host, Frank O'Collins. Uh, Frank, uh, how about the uh, chat window, meantime? Yeah, let me, let me uh, just get some involved. of the questions here. Sure. Um, one of the things, uh, and I won't read it out his call sign, <laughs> but he says, Frank, can you address the use, power, and importance of notary publics? Look, there's an important section in there in the notes, and we've done a lot of study now and research into the importance of witnesses and, and the importance and function of notaries. Um, the communities will have their own notary. But the important thing to bear in mind is that the community, first and foremost, is a witness to each other in the validity of their actions. And the ultimate community is when you get to 12. When you get to 12, you are a curia, you are a jury. And as a jury, when you bear witness to the action of one of your members and are prepared to stand and testify, then that is an incredible ancient power that cannot be denied. And it changes their behavior with you. Now, if your community gets to 36, you then become what is known as a grand jury, 
And there's a grand jury, being three three juries in one. You you uh, in many places um, equal and be able to to start moving the law as appropriate in particularly in America and elsewhere. So what I'd say is the notary public is an important role, and we will be using those notary roles in the communities and there are notes on that in the document of what a notary public is and why it's so important but most importantly is a community is a way of strengthening your claim of right and strengthening the claims of everyone that is prepared to join as one and that's the thing they want us to stay divided when we become united they have a problem so hopefully that answers some of the points there on the question. A um, couple other questions. Da, 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 da. What have we got? Um, okay, question about, um, just a comment about the lack of the essence of the feminine um, in Eukadia. I dispute that. I dispute the lack of the feminine. Go and have a look at the journey of UCA, the journey of me. The journey of UCA um, is 23 chapters male. The journey of me is 23 chapters feminine. 46 chapters completes the journey of UCA. Go and have a look at the charters. In the charters it's the first time in history that we identify um, the status of the feminine and women and the importance rebalancing and this is historic right throughout. So I, I, I beg to differ on that in terms of the absence of the feminine. I believe we're dealing with a balance of feminine masculine that has not been there for quite some time. Um, uh, okay, well, if we're going to talk about feminine goddess and witchcraft or any of those kind of things that may be raised and people may have an interest in Wicca, I, I strongly suggest that they read the canons and start to read the history. There are movements that have been created to cater for people waking up. Think about it. The, the system has known that people wake up from time to time. So what they've done over the ages is they've created movements that did not exist before and they have been part of it and created a mythology around them that bears no resemblance to the truth. Now, this is not a discounting of the authenticity of people that are part of that movement, not at all. If you want to wake up and be in touch with the earth, that is a wonderful, wonderful thing. But if the mythology and the ideas that you're using to get in touch were written by Jesuit priests and designed to have no factual basis whatsoever, I consider that a problem. So all I ask is, if you want to, if you want to look at it, please come and view Eukadia with open eyes, because I dispute the idea that there is an absence of feminine, and indeed, if there is an absence of magic, Eukadia is magic when you read it and see it for what it is. Um, I don't have any other questions there. I see at the moment. Um, uh, oh, we have a question here. I sent an email a few weeks ago concerning. Uh, Indians in the station on the land also um, I asked if that could be resent to me because I don't recall seeing that email um, uh, what other questions do we have okay here's a question um, guest 53 I'm in the middle of old EDP process do I continue on that path or do I change to the new process for the dishonor um, look it's up to you and, and the reason, I know that sounds like a non-answer, but let me, let me just qualify. The intent between the old process and the new process has not changed. If you've done the old process, you have perfected your claim of right by the time you have defended the dishonour. If you want to press on, that is entirely up to you. It does not diminish. The only reason we changed the tone is that we are now raising it to a new level. So I really can't answer that for you. It's each to their own. For some people, I've said um, it may be, based on their circumstance, worthwhile 
repeating the process.